Hi there, I'm Brian Whitmore, director of the Russia program here at SEPA, and this is a vertical video. One can be forgiven for thinking that the past couple weeks have had a bit of a 70s vibe. We had Vladimir Putin hosting the Africa Summit in Sochi, where Russia and Nigeria signed a deal for 12 Mi-35 attack helicopters, where Ross Adam in Ethiopia held talks about building a new nuclear power plant, and where the Kremlin leader accused former colonial powers of exploiting Africa for its natural resources. Underscoring Moscow's push for renewed influence on the continent, we also had two Russian nuclear-capable bombers landing out in South Africa for a carefully timed training mission. This all happened, of course, as the Kremlin cemented its status as a power broker in Syria and amid Moscow's efforts to turn Venezuela into a client state. It's all very reminiscent of the Soviet drive into the Southern Hemisphere in the mid to late 70s, which saw Moscow make inroads in the Horn of Africa, Latin America, and Asia. But the similarities between today and Putin's 70s show don't stop with geopolitics. According to research by experts at Moscow's Higher School of Economics, the stagnation in the Russian economy has now lasted longer and is deeper than under Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. According to the research, the Russian economy has grown an average of 0.88% per year since 2008. That's well under the 1.5% it grew over the 1970s during Brezhnev's stagnation the much maligned period of Zastoy. In a recent blog post for Echo Moskvi, Nikolai Rybakov, the head of the opposition Yablika party, wrote that just like in Brezhnev's time, the Kremlin is spending billions on geopolitics, while the supreme leader has forgotten he heads a country where two-thirds of the population is at the brink of poverty or over it. Back in the 70s, we in the West tended to look at the Soviet geopolitical gains and expected the trend to continue indefinitely, while ignoring the shaky economic foundation that would ultimately prove to be the regime's undoing. There is, of course, no guarantee that we're headed for the same ending, but the Putin regime has some very fundamental weaknesses for the West to exploit, if only it could find the political will to do so. Keep telling us what you think on Twitter and on Facebook. I'm Brian Whitmore, and this was a Vertical Video.